here's the drive clutch off off the W project sled. Um, this is known, I believe, as the high performance clutch, the Polaris high performance clutch. And the earlier clutch, and there might even have been one before, was the standard clutch. It didn't have the screws in the towers, and some of these had a wider bushing uh, on the cover, which makes it a little better wear capability. This clutch, I think someone has, let's see if you can see that. I think someone has uh, took a hammer to this and probably tried to get the clutch off, thinking it was just stuck on the shaft, but it's a tapered uh, shaft, so no amount of hammering is going to get that off. You'll just break something. And uh, the belt clearance, I've been struggling with getting the right belt clearance. I've got a bunch of Polaris 045 belts that they're all a little bit shorter. I found a 042, which gives me a nice center to center or belt deflection, but it's worn. And I'm what I want to do is take another clutch, set it up for that belt, a little bit worn, and I think it'll be optimum. So anyway, I took the screws out of the tower, and I'm just to the point of taking the last three screws out of the cover. And at that point, we'll have the spring wanting to take off on us. So carefully now the screws are loose but the spring the cover sometimes sticks so I wouldn't want anybody to get slapped in the nose by this usually just a little tap will do it Oops. Now because these are a balanced beast, it's best to mark these. I should have thought of that. This clutch is old enough that it doesn't have an X on the cover. A lot of them had X's which matched the spider which matched the sliding sheave. Now this clutch has been marked with a punch mark and a felt mark. And if I know myself, I've probably got two little hammer dots somewhere on this clutch which don't seem to be jumping out. Just to try, attempt to maintain the, the balance. So we'll get a center punch. And we'll put a couple of marks. This should have been done before I took it apart. But see what I mean? There. So the setup on this clutch looks like we have the standard blue Polaris spring. A lot of mid-90s Polaris has used that. 110 pound at engagement and 300 at revved up. Um, this spider has an X on it. Uh, and I actually think I cobbled this clutch together at some point. Yeah, it's pretty sloppy, no doubt about that. Very sloppy. In a perfect world, we'd get a new clutch, wouldn't we? But we'll take it next door on the clutch holding fixture and take it apart. First thing we'll do is disassemble the, the donor clutch. I think we have another clutch that's like this, only in a bit better shape. Let's see what it's like inside. So there's the donut clutch. It probably isn't much better, but it hasn't been whaled on with a hammer. So we're going to take it all apart and clean it really good. We might put new buttons in here just to tighten that side play, but I think the big bushing is pretty good. Now these, to hold the weights in, they had a tapered pin that you had to drive out and you drove them out the opposite direction that the engine runs so that the pin wouldn't fly out under RPM. Uh, my buddy David told me years ago a good upgrade is to drill these holes out in here for a quarter inch and then you can use a quarter inch clutch bolt um, and then it makes easier uh, shift weight changes down the line so we'll probably 
this will take us a good hour to get all this tuned up. So all we do now is knock that pin out with a long center punch. Usually it sounds easier than it is. If we just had a hammer, A lot of you may ask why I am using a high performance clutch instead of the new P85. Uh, I have a P85 that fits the motor, but uh, the clutch doesn't cover the clutch cover that I built. So I'd have a lot of metal work to do. I've got many of these clutches and, and once they're set up for a vintage sled use, I've had good luck with them. Uh, they're cantankerous to change weights and springs in, no doubt about that. But uh, we're going to play with this, and uh, in phase two of the build, maybe next year, we'll put a better clutch cover on it, go to a P85. I've got a list of about 15 things that should be upgraded, uh, and we'll talk about that later. So this clutch happened to have B weights in it, very common, I think for 340 TX. I'm not sure about that. Could be wrong on that. Need a couple more hits with our punch to get those out. So it's a matter of getting a long quarter inch drill bit, a really long one, and I usually do this in the vise, but it's sort of maxed out. Precision work. We will clean the filings out later, I hope. So the new replacement clutch has been cleaned. I took one shim out of the spider, didn't show you that, to get a little tighter belt clearance, side clearance and we drilled the holes out to fit quarter inch bolts also drilled here to get the head of the quarter inch clutch bolt or uh, weight pin bolt through so we're about to put the donor weights and spring in this clutch we're going to use that as a benchmark because the sled it would do about 60 miles an hour around 97 clicks or 95 clicks in 660 feet on snow so if we can get that kind of speed in the straights, um, I think it'll be a happy situation. Before we assemble the clutch, I want to just make sure the weight of this, the grams weight of the weights that we're using, these are a 03 weight. I'll have to look in the book, but I think that's a Comet weight. There's a little stall ground in there for clutch engagement, and they're, they're not a heavy weight. They're probably 40 grams or something, so we'll see what their trusty eBay gram scale says. 32 gram weights. Very light. That's to get revs out of it. I don't know if that's going to be the right sort of a calibration. Uh, we're within a hundredth or five hundredths of a gram, a little bit off on that one, so it's a starting point. So we've installed the 32 gram weights, and there's some little shim washers that go in there, and those weights I think were new uh, when I built this previous clutch, so they're they're nice and tight. Uh, the rollers in the spider are all good, no flat spots. So we're to the point of putting it back together. Now we get our two little punch marks lined up. Put the spring in.
Just pause while I find my little holding fixture. Years ago I built a little U-shaped piece of wood to hold that sheave up so it's a little bit easier to reassemble. Now I haven't cleaned this cover up yet but I'll do that in due course. But I've, I've done, I've cleaned the bushing. Now these are tough to get together. The bolts are so short that it takes a little help. I always maintained uh, a big nut on my clutch puller for this purpose. Now I'm not sure this is the right puller for this reassembly job. It's definitely not the right one for the assembly job. Anyway, oh, I have a washer somewhere. Hold on. Now they do make clutch compression tools for this purpose, but Santa Claus hasn't been so helpful to me yet that he bought me one, so anyway, just got to make sure this engages properly with the spring here. need to do is compress the old guy a quarter of an inch or so. tighten anything too much until we get the little cover screws in. They need to be aligned as well. These are very prone to stripping these little, I don't know what they are, it takes a 5 16 head, it's like a number 8. There is a little lock washer that goes on here as well. Try to keep it the way the boys in Roseau, Minnesota meant it to be. There. As I said, they're prone to stripping, so there's no sense in getting a big socket wrench on here. Maybe just for the final torque. This is a 20 inch leaf spring North Star ski uh, made by our friend Danny Johnson down in, in uh, Minnesota and they're a very rigid uh, extrusion and they have the side plates in different places to keep the ski from flexing. On here is a 10 inch carbide, these are a Polaris 10 inch competition carbide I bought I eBayed a few years ago and they've been sharpened. I have a jig made and a uh, carbide sharpening uh, silicon, silicon oxide? I could be corrected on that. Wheel to sharpen. So we're just going to bolt these on the W project. Uh, it is Tuesday and we're racing on Saturday. Uh, this sled has never been on the ice uh, and I hope to get it out before we go, but uh, that's that's racing. So we've got a few little things to do. We've got to drill the holes out for uh, 7 sixteenths 
these skis came off a of mercury that I had 7 16 bolts in and we'll use new bolts and so forth. Santa Claus was good to us this year and we for Christmas we got some grade 8 uh, 5 16 bolts from the bolt supply house and I think Santa Claus bought them in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. So for a change we're going to use some new hardware on these skis. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I've been told that you want very slight toe out on a snowmobile for straight line stability. Now the steering on the W sled is pretty tight, mostly new components, etc. So what I've done here is I'm just taking any slack out of the steering with the bungee cord there, and I have rigged up a, just a threaded rod with a nut. Now we used to measure from outside of the ski to the outside of the ski front and back but I've also heard tell that you should measure the carbide itself because if the holes aren't drilled quite right your skis may be parallel but your carbides may not. So we'll just take a look at how how I'm going about this. So what I'm doing, I'm just putting the end of my piece of 5 8 threaded rod against the inside of the right carbide and I just adjust the nut so we're just touching the outside of, of this side just for simplicity's sake. And to do this, move that to the back, sorry about the bald spot. So we're within an eighth of an inch of full parallel with those skis, with the carbides. Therefore, if we take the bungee cord off, any amount of slack will give us a slight amount of toe out. Now if we have a real sloppy steering, that'll be too much, but this is pretty tight. So I will take our rod with us to the racetrack, and if the toboggan darts around, we can... Uh, do a quick wheel alignment, a ski alignment at the track. So we hope it works. Well, it's January 22nd and we're going to try the W project. On the ice, this is uh, Keith and Kyle's practice track. And we're pretty grateful to them for plowing this for us to use. We'll leave them a few cold beer after we're gone. So here goes nothing. Thank <laughs> you. 
What do you think? Yeah, it's okay. You like that better? 